which I am a very, very avid fan of from the previous titles. Before this, I'm going to invite back our very special guest we had on earlier, Filippo. Come back onto stage, sir. All the way from Nintendo of Europe. Hello, Filippo. Hey. So, Filippo, Hello. Hi. would you like to tell Hi, everyone. everybody at home, what game are we going to be showcasing next? So, we're going to show you a little bit of Paper Mario Color Splash. There we go. Any Paper Mario fans? Yes, indeed. Right, let's get straight to it, Filippo. Okay. Let's take a seat. Okay. Sorry I was late. Right, okay. We're going to get straight underway with this one. So, Paper Mar Mario Color Splash, latest in the Paper Mario series. Um, so, tell us a little bit just about the basic premise of this new title. Uh, we need the other feet. Uh, so, um, basically, this is the first uh, Paper Mario title on Wii U, the first Paper Mario in HD as well. And uh, as you can see from the, ve the moment I start uh, this level, it's uh, the first Paper Mario in which the entire world is uh, made out of paper, actually. Uh, in previous titles, there was a mix of uh, more like classic 3D elements and paper. In this one, there's uh, everything in the, in the game world is made of we paper. You can see the uh, toe just, uh, just flapping in the breeze there. Exactly. <laughs> but also all the environment as well, no? Uh, so, in, uh, in this Paper Mario title, we find ourselves in Prism Island, uh, which has been uh, robbed of, uh, of color by some evil shy guy with a straw that sucked the color away from, from the environment. As you can see, um, oh, yes. Yeah, there's like a, a white spot of color there missing there. So, uh, this is uh, Blue Bay Beach. And, uh, uh, I mean, the main aspect about Paper Mario, apart from, of course, the great, uh, uh, the great visuals, is the humor. This is a game that makes you laugh at, uh, at every single sentence, basically. In fact, I would encourage everybody to read uh, the text, uh, and maybe uh, Bowie and Nims can act, uh, act uh, some of the lines out. <laughs> uh, if you really want. Um, uh, well, we'll try, we'll try. Do you want to go for my best toad voice? Yeah, show, show us. <laughs> no, no, my voice is too, okay. too cracked. I can't so, do it. Anyway, in this, uh, in this uh, level that we're uh, we playing, the toads are preparing themselves for Ocean Fest, which is like a festival on the seaside. Uh, as, uh, as this toad can, uh, says, they are totally pumped. They are totally, totally pumped. Totally pumped, dude. Little pump there. So, and uh, this little guy is Yui, which is uh, basically a, a bucket of paint, uh, which is our, uh, um, our companion through, 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 this through this game. He's uh, an inhabitant of Prism Island, and uh, uh, he will guide us through the game and give us advices as well, and just comment on the situation. Okay. I guess toads will be toads. I missed the day when they were around the, the fountain. So yeah, my objective is to find, uh, in this level, it would be to find a mini paint star, uh, which gives back a bit of the color to the world. So here you see, uh, so Paper Mario has his, of course, trusty jump attack, uh, or jump. <laughs> he, uh, he can use his hammer, uh, <laughs> made of paper. Crumpling poor toad. And uh, now uh, he also has uh, a um, paint hammer. So you ah, see, I see. Uh, on the upper left corner of the screen, you can see my paint reserves. And uh, I can just splash paint, uh, which looks really, uh, really realistic, really uh, wet and... It, does, uh, it looks and absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, if uh, I just use it randomly, the, the, color, the color that appears is random. And if I, for example, try to uh, use it here on this uh, uh, missing uh, patch of color on the wall, you see it's blue. Ah. And uh, giving back color to the world, you see my paint reserves decrease uh, substantially, like maybe I can... So, for example, here as well, and I can get something like coins in this case. I can replenish my paint reserves by hitting uh, with my hammer uh, color, uh, elements that are colored in the world. So, for example, this blue flower uh, gives me some blue paint. These, uh, oh yeah, if I turn over this red uh, shell, I get some red paint. If I bang my hammer on this palm, some coconut. Coconuts come down and give me some yellow, for example. I mean, you've already, awesome. bo you've already bopped Toad on the head once, but if you were to bop him again, could you get the yellow back off him? Or? No, I no. can just change the color. You can just <laughs> change him into a blue Toad. <laughs> so, um, so one of the main mechanics is, of course, uh, uh, giving back colors to the world. Um, then battles are very uh, interesting, I think, in uh, Paper Mario Color Splash because, uh, because we see... Um, basically, that for the developer, every battle should be a puzzle. Uh, so, here we see three toads, and uh, I can play um, cards that you can see on my gamepad. Um, I don't know if we can see the gamepad there, but um, I have cards that I can play. Some of them are painted, some of them are not. 
at this point in the game, I can play uh, two cards um, at a time. So uh, potentially here, uh, if I don't know what I'm doing, I could uh, spend a lot of, uh, a lot of cards uh, and I could uh, spend a lot of pain because as you can see when I place a card on the deck, uh, you see the play paint reserves are, f are flashing, so I would need that much paint oh, to, to paint okay. this card. I can, I can also use this card uh, blank, but it will not be as effective. So if I use, uh, uh, for example, just one card, I will just use one jump, because everybody knows what happens when uh, you jump on a Koopa shell when, it's, uh, when the Koopa is inside this exactly. shell. So because I know what I'm doing, I have to think about the battle as a puzzle, as I said. I just choose this card. Uh, now the card is ready. And when I'm done painting, I can actually send it back into uh, the main screen. Uh, if you can change uh, the image. There yes. We go. Back to the main so I send it back. And now with the right timing, so I press A once, twice, three times, four times. So you see, oh, nice. with just one card, I solve this battle. If I use the hammer, for example, I might have killed the first, uh, uh, the first Koopa, but then I would have uh, to fight the other, the other two. And of for course, example. oh, I see, I get what you mean. Just very, very quickly, you picked up a different colored um, piece of paint and it created this kind of like handle for the hammer that got... There was a hammer made of cardboard that I picked up that did mm. that. So uh, when that uh, gauge uh, is, uh, is full, uh, I will increase my paint reserves. So I can increase the number of cards I can play, I can increase my paint reserves. So there is some character progression. Uh, as I go through the game. So you can again, once, as Felipe just said, use the cards without color, but they just won't be as effective exactly. if they are colored. Maybe in that case, because the Koopa was inside this shell, I could have used it blank, but I didn't want to take any risk. <laughs> so you can find the cards by fighting enemies or by like finding them in uh, question mark blocks, for example. Uh -huh. Do they replenish um, after every, every single battle? Do you only have a set reserve or when it's, when, when it's gone, is it gone forever? So the cards are gone uh, when you use them, but uh, while you are in battle, you can actually spend coins to buy new cards. So you will never ever run out of cards, basically. So, rainbow so I, assume, I assume the rainbow paint would then can just refill all of your three colors. Exactly. Nailed it. So that's a very acute observation, sir. Uh, I'm on the so, ball today, I'm on the ball. Uh, something uh, that the developer uh, created when they made the game is that there, it's not just in the battles that there are puzzles. It's also in the environment. So if I talk to this, uh, to this toad here. There's a rumor that some <laughs> legendary <laughs> pirate captain he this hit treasure. Ah, I see. Yeah, so he's looking for a treasure. He's been looking around for Aiden Switch, but he, he cannot find it. He guesses it's just a legend. So, so you can see that there's a vine conveniently placed there. If I use my hammer, the vine comes down. Ah. And I pull it now. Ooh. Ta -ta. Look at those riches. So I guess that's what the toad was referring to. Uh, but if I try to tell him... So, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's not the brightest of toads. Bless him, he's trying so hard. Yes. He's trying... And now you're just going to rob him of all of his treasure. Of and he'll course. never know that and there was indeed treasure. Remember there. when I said before, the entire world is made of paper. You see, even the coins here are basically three layers of cardboard with the golden paper glued on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, again, it's that whole thing of the attention to detail, isn't it? Yes. So uh, really and, and everything. Like generally, the world is well, it's not kind of like an open world kind of thing, but it's like worlds that kind of, you go there into a level. There are separate levels, but you might uh, need to come back to levels that you already played because something, a new event has happened. There's, uh, really, you have to think about the game. There's a lot of puzzling elements in this game. And um, so talking about how the world is built, um, the development team told us that uh, for they imagine this world as uh, a structure, a backbone of uh, hard uh, cardboard, of uh, box cardboard, uh, with uh, layers of uh, different paper glued on it. You can actually see it here next to Paper Mario. You see this, uh, that there is the cardboard in between. Yeah, you can see the uh, jagged edges. And in here, in this, uh, in this area that was a secret area, it almost looked like a storage area where they just left over pieces of uh, uh, unpainted cardboard just, uh, just there. <laughs> and if I it, go outside... Just, just further kind of pointing out just kind of how um, key and kind of important the aesthetic of Paper Mario is. It's always been one yes. of those ones, very, very stylized. And kind of and always kind of use that as its main driving force. You know, the, the development team told us also that uh, during the design phase, they basically went to uh, a copy shop and bought uh, as many types of paper possible because they have a very clear idea of each kind of paper and uh, uh, what e exactly makes up uh, the world. You see, like, uh, here on the floor is a bit more flat on the, on the green part. The, the, the blue part is a bit rougher. Uh, even, like, there, those bushes look a bit almost cottony paper. Uh, I love the clouds hanging from strings. 
uh, <laughs> on the ceiling. There's a lot of references to Super Mario Bros. 3 as well in the game. So there's lots to look at in this particular game. Yes, the, game is gorgeous. the game is just gorgeous. I mean, as, as Yui is pointing out. Whoa. So it's look the first the time that Yui is at the seaside. <laughs> Would you look at that view? He's very happy. Yeah, so now he's uh, actually saying it's just a flimsy piece of paper. Uh, actually, it was made of metal before. We sort of squeezed the third dimension out of him at the beginning of the game. Uh, and, you know, uh, he's our companion. He, uh, he will comment on, uh, on everything that we see. And if I press up on the plus control pad, I can just call him. Uh, and he will comment on something. Uh, and, you know, it's a system of, of hints that I can call up when I want, if I want to. I see. There, there, there seems to be a queue forming just down yeah, there. Yeah, there's a stack of, uh, of uh, paper toads. <laughs> a no? stack of paper toads. So that's where the Ocean Fest would start. No paper cutting. <laughs> well played, well played. Hey! Oh, they're very angry. <laughs> Back of the yeah. line. I, I love the mean face toads, you know, <laughs> like but you know, like I'm just gonna uh, stop here for a second. If you look at the sea as well, how beautifully it's uh, it's created. It's actually different layers, different uh, sheets of paper that are sliding onto each other with maybe like brown, like uh, uh, bread bread bag uh, yeah. uh, uh, underneath that uh, represents the sand uh, soak, uh, the sand absorbing Soaked the water. water. Yeah. This metallic paper on top that's shining that represents the foam. Uh, it's really so beautifully uh, uh, imagined, this word, uh, completely made out of paper. Even the text boxes are made of paper, actually. So now, I'm just going to show you uh, one, uh, uh, another scene here in the Ocean Fest, uh, in the Blue Bay Beach level. Oh, we got a paper but card I boat. Do, I, do, I do like the, uh, the almost bounty-esque um, paper use for the sale. Yeah, it, to me it looks like a kitchen roll. Actually, it's called something else now, isn't it? Sorry. Um, uh, no, the oh, the could, yeah, why not? We'll go with Cushel. I'm living in the 90s still. So, uh, the red toads are wondering why is this guy just going around? Uh, he wants to sail at the end of the, at the edge of the world. Uh, this very, very brave toad is saying he's embarking on this long, foolish, potentially deadly journey in order to discover his destiny. <laughs> and, and, and again, he's got that determined face. <laughs> Sounds like a midlife crisis <laughs> to me. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the red toads are pretty mean to him, actually. <laughs> I mean, that's some good advice, I guess. And they're suggesting to upgrade his ride. So, but now the other toad comes and calls and the Ocean Fest is starting. So they immediately lose interest in the blue toad <laughs> and, uh, and his quest. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's so said. mean. So, yeah. But he's having none of it. He doesn't care. He is on a mission. Actually, he's going to say, if I talk to him again, he's going to say that he's going to sail to the margin of the world. <laughs> to find my destiny. Yeah, so actually, if you want to see what okay. happens to this uh, cute little blue toad, uh, you get some hints in the trailer of the game. Um, but Check now, I mean, trailer. I wish I could show you the Ocean Fest proper, because it's really funny. But uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to another uh, to another level where I'm gonna show you the very first boss battle in the game. Okay. So if I can okay. get the different, we have a uh, separate. Look at this. Yes. The pre ready to go. Uh huh. I see. We are just gonna quickly flip over. We get our secondary to our second screen. There we are. Right. Okay. There it is. So here we are instead in the Crimson Tower, which is the first place where I can find a big red paint star, which are like the big uh, paint stars that give back color to a huge areas of the game. Ah. I mean, so you've also got uh, increased um, paint gauge as well. So yeah. Keep, nice. We keep going with the acute observation here. Yeah. Yeah. Now we I have 220 up from 180 that I had before because I upgraded a bit uh, my paint and reserves. And here, actually, you see, I need to get to that uh, uh, door on the upper right. But if I try to go through, you see, there is no, there is no uh, staircase in the middle here. So this is, if I don't know what to do, this might be a good time to press up on the plus control pad and call Yui, which tells me that if Watch life was a video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, if only. So uh, what we can do here, when you see these very clear lines on the, on the background, you can sometimes try to press the Y button 
And uh, if I press it now, I will activate the cutout feature. The, the game, like a page, will slide into the gamepad. Uh, and uh, on my gamepad... If we can get the gamepad footage, please. We will. Beautiful. So on the gamepad, I can cut out parts of uh, the game world. Wow, using your finger. You just slide along. Yeah, wow. On the, you know, on the dotted, on the dotted on line. On the dotted line, of course. Of course. <laughs> so sometimes I can find some secrets. I could even find some Luigi's, hidden Luigi's that give me some uh, nice. bonus, yeah. bonuses. But in this case, I do some metaphysical 2D platforming. And now the game switches back to the TV screen. And I'm there uh, right where I wanted to be. You see, oh, I, wow. I, I traversed yeah. That area, kind of like, and kind of taking off from what it had in Super Pay Pay for Mario with the uh, Z axis, but kind of just going along that line of like changing your 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 perception of the world and how you can in interact. Exactly. So if I go through here, this oh, is what I want your voice you. acting. Okay. Minions. <laughs> Morton Fine Pain Star. <laughs> so Morton again is not the smartest guy. He speaks all in caps and he usually misspells misspells a lot of a lot of words. I apologize in advance. Mm. Um, so that's the uh, big red pain star, which is sleeping. Bad Mario <laughs> Fine Pain Star. It's quite again. I'm sorry. But Morton, but Morton find, find it more. More Mortons. <laughs> more, more tons. tons. <laughs> Morton Crush Mario. Oh, okay. so we're going into a battle with exactly more so. tons. And Morton uh, Strong. <laughs> Morton More Tons. Well played, sir. So, yeah. here again, a small reference to uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 with the uh, magic wand. Bring me pedal stool. <laughs> so, that's how he calls a pedestal. <laughs> Morton on pedal stool. Look now, Morton safe here. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so actually, uh, you see, I was saying before, every, bar is a, every battle is a puzzle. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, even more so during boss battles. Uh, actually, I really love, uh, sorry, I really love Paper Mario that sometimes turns around, looks over his shoulder to see that if the shy guy are actually looking at his card as his <laughs> end of cards. cards. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so here, um, I really need to think uh, um, about what I'm doing because if I if I I cannot jump on Morton because I would be hit by spikes. I if I use a hammer, I would hit the pedestal and not him. So now, uh, if we can show the uh, gamepad screen and my card deck, I have to think about what I'm doing. So, for example, if I only had like a triple jump like this one, the first jump would get the first shy guy. The second jump uh, would get the second one, but the third one would make me take damage. But uh, that's why I have to say, I have to think about it a bit like a puzzle. So I still choose to use these two cards. I paint them. They actually take a lot of paint because they are multiple attacks in a row. Okay. And once I uh, bring them on the, on the TV screen and I flick them, can, you, can we change the image? Bring it back to the main? Yes. There we go. So there we go. Basically, I will do the first jump correctly. One, two, three, four. I will miss on purpose the second jump so that the third jump is still on the shy guy. Ah, okay. And now I'm free to use my hammer to remove the... The pedal stool. Yeah. High place broke, <laughs> low place scary. <laughs> so you can see on the card as well, as you're progressively using the card, the color drains exactly. slowly from the card as I well. I could also, if I had better timing than what I just had, I could also block. <laughs> so now um, I'm just going to play uh, a few other cards. Also, I noticed as you take damage, um, actually Morton's uh, color is slowly draining from his feet. So I assume yes, the, you... he's slowly going black and white. So you have the idea exactly. of how much damage you're doing based on how colorful the enemy is. So now I have to try to deal as much damage as, possi as possible at this part, because otherwise he would summon his pedestal again, and I would have to restart and potentially spending a lot of cards, a lot of paint. So now is really the moment to give it my all. I use a big jump. The big jump. Good. Nice. Very nice. See so yeah, we see the, the, the color completely draining from the legs up. His feet has gone completely white. Oh. Getting excellent on the hammer is not that easy, actually, Ah, as you can see. <laughs> so I hope I did enough damage. Good, Good block. block. Good block. It, it, there is a kind of a, a timing element as well. And of course Bring I didn't. Bring me pedal <laughs> stool. <laughs> So this battle will be a bit longer than I thought because <laughs> I wasn't as effective in my timing. 
but let me try again. So as you progress through the game, Felipe, you'll be able to use, of course, more than two cards in one go, or is it always two cards you can use? So, uh, actually, when I started the game, I could use one card. Okay. Now I can use two. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not sure later on in the game. For now, we are just showing this. Okay. Also, the hammer also gives you... Uh, the hammer, like the wave of attack of the hammer, also hits uh, other enemies, as oh, you saw I from see. the side guys. So now, I hope... This time I did enough damage. Yes. Nice. Mortar, Mortar is, is fired. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Oh, oh, baby. Paper <laughs> flames. But see, I I, I lost uh, two cards in an entire turn, and a lot of paint just because uh, um, my my timing was not was not the correct one. I I, okay. I did not play well. I did not think my battle through. Right. So uh, now, as you can see, he looks a bit scary. Everything is on fire. So I'm going to use some restorative items. OK. So a mushroom would uh, heal me, while a uh, green one-up mushroom restores my pain ah, reserves, because okay. I'm going to need them. Hot, Hot man it. it. And even if I block here, wow! you can see I get 48 out of uh, out of 50 HP. Um, he's looking dire. <laughs> he's actually flailing, as you can see. The paper exactly. Is actually yeah, he's floating. Bit, he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's he has uh, <laughs> not a lot of HP, so he's a bit uh, floppy. Let's yes. Say. Yeah. There you go. So now it's the moment for me to show you thing cards. Sometimes in the game world you find 3D objects uh, that you squeeze and you transform into cards. Ah. Uh, and very often, uh, if uh, there is a level with a thing card in it, you need to collect the thing card to finish the level. So it's very hard to me. It's impossible to miss, basically. <laughs> Um, and uh, and also, you yeah, n should not be afraid of using them in the wrong point because they always uh, um, you can always find replicas everywhere in the world. So now, because we have uh, uh, because we have uh, Morton on fire, I'm going to use a fire extinguisher card because uh, well, it seems the appropriate yeah. thing to do. And you heal as well, I hope. And I'm healing, yes. Okay. So thing cards really show crazy, crazy scenes usually, like in this one. Um, and also, they are the only ones that show scenes that are uh, in, like, they're not made of paper. You see, like, I always think that Mortar in this case is uh, uh, <laughs> like in King Kong, the, the dame uh, in, in danger. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the skyscraper is on fire and yeah, she's yeah, going, yeah. ah! That's, that's yeah. what I imagine. But anyway, um, so oh, there is wow. also, yeah, there is timing involved also in these thing cards. I had to touch uh, on the on the touch screen Fire when the, the, the pin was going out of the extinguisher. And now we broke his fire. <laughs> and he's practically right. Just stick. <laughs> so I will heal, even though I know already that uh, his stick... It's stick. It's stick. stick. <laughs> Only does one damage. One damage with the stick. Yeah. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another thing card. Not because I need to use it now, just because it's funny and I want to show you what happens. <laughs> Always a bit of humor necessary here and there. And uh, before we use the extinguisher, now we're going to use the fan. And in this yeah. case, uh, there's also timing involved. I need to tap on the screen to make this uh, cosmic fan that appears from the edge of the world spin faster. So now... <laughs> I assume you mean the margin of the world. Oh, he's tapping smashing. away on the screen. Oh! <laughs> so I get an excellent. <laughs> well done. That HD fan. Beautiful. Exactly. Bop. Done. And so uh, our Morton is gone. Morton! Morton, <laughs> Morton lose! Bad Mario get pain star. Master order Morton. Say go get pain star. <laughs> Morton, more like Lester. <laughs> Ay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, anyway, now uh, the uh, this uh, boss battle is complete, and as you see, I really need to know what I'm doing. I need to choose my cards carefully. I need to think about the battle. So, as you saw, each time you use a sort of like a real life item, like the extinguisher and the fan, it kind of transfers you into like this real world -like exactly. environment. Yeah. This is the think card. So, yeah, uh, mm. you can clearly see that uh, the Manikineko, the Katolak, 
uh, is standing out. It, it doesn't really fit ah. in the paper world. So I squeeze color and uh, the third dimension wow. out of him, and <laughs> it becomes a thing card. And to be honest, I wish I could show you this. You can actually see what this uh, thing card does in the trailer. Basically, the, the development team wanted to concentrate all the stereotypes that uh, people have about Japan. So when you use the, the thing card, the wave of Kamagawa, Kanagawa parts off. You see like the, the um, Tokyo Tower, you see, uh, um, I think, a pachinko machine, a samurai, a ninja, all sorts of uh, crazy things, and then the Manikineko just stomping on enemies. <laughs> And you saved a toad. Yeah, sometimes you can bring toads back to life when you color them again. And actually, this toad thinks that uh, it's the cat of luck that uh, summoned Mario because he was just crushed by it. <laughs> yeah, boy! I knew it was more worth making the trick. So, we've completed uh, the first bus battle. Awesome. Very shine like, that one. And uh, yeah, that's a red uh, big paint star. And you can see that as uh, um, Mario and Huey travel on it, it will give back color into the world. First off, into the map, and then into uh, certain parts of the game. Ah. But so this is uh, Paper oh. Mario Color Splash, coming out in uh, October as well. October, October 2016. Yes, indeed. Very nice. So bringing back, obviously, color to the world brings it back to life, and it can, you know, comes alive like again in the, the red open. castle. Like, the first time you're here, uh, Yui comments that with my tiny paint timer, I would never be able to paint the entire wall of this castle. And ah. sometimes you need to paint items before you can use them. I see. There we go. And Wonderful. Yeah, so this was our demonstration for Paper Mario. Ooh. Thank you very much Let for taking us through that. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for that fantastic demonstration of Paper Mario Color Splash. Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah? So, guys, this game, as Felipe just explained,